Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now, it's not often that I find a free graphics card and at the moment you're more likely to overpay for a new or used piece of hardware. That being said, it's not totally uncommon to find something that's being given away. And that was the case with this. This hefty looking graphics card was advertised as free on a local Facebook selling site, though due to the current restrictions in place in the UK, uh, due to you know what, I had to pick it up from outside someone's house. Uh, it was left on an outside window bay. Unfortunately, it was raining on the day that I picked it up. Uh, and that's why I mention all of this. As it turns out then, the card was described as temperamental, so the whole weather thing didn't help out in all likelihood, though the card has been sitting a few feet away from a radiator for the past couple of days to ensure that it's dried out. I did tell the seller, or giver a wire, if that makes sense, that they could likely get something for it on eBay, even if it is broken, but they said they'd rather just have it gone without the risk of any comeback. Believe me, I've sold faulty hardware, described as faulty or completely broken before online, and still had people filing broken or does not work claims against me, so I sort of see where they were coming from. Sometimes it's more trouble than it's worth to sell something that you think doesn't work. But let's see what's up with it. At this point, I still had no idea. This part of the voiceover was recorded before I'd even tried using the graphics card. But enough chit chat, let's talk about the specs. This hefty beast is a Radeon HD 6990 from HIS. Five years ago, I would have said, oh cool, a dual GPU graphics card. These days I usually say, oh no, a dual GPU graphics card. Codenamed Antilles, I think I'm pronouncing that right, the HD6990 comprises of two Cayman GPUs on a single board that work together in Crossfire with supported games. Crossfire and SLI, as we've covered before, are both pretty much dead with newer games, but at least the following tests will also give us a chance to see how a single HD6950 performs in early 2021. So first things first, and it's time to test for stability. Some run specialised GPU intensive software, others run Crisis. Seriously though, I played this for about an hour, closer to two hours to be fair, and I experienced no issues with the card at all. What surprises me most is how the single fan design actually keeps this thing from overheating. It's not exactly cool, but we're not at the point of melting this GPU, which is a good sign. My makeshift test bench consists of a Ryzen 3400G, 16GB of 3200MHz DDR4, and an 850W Be Quiet Power Zone PSU. The reason I switched from the i5 for this video is because the 3400G has integrated graphics, so if I needed to flash the card's BIOS or something just to try and rule out that as an issue, I could have still seen what I was doing in Windows, but as it turns out it looks like we won't have to do that. Regarding the fault with the card then, and I suspect that the previous owner was using a power supply that was just too weak. I'll be letting them know in case they want this thing back, but if not, I'll sell it on myself and give them the money. It's nice to see that it survived the rainfall as well. Now one of the really cool features of the HD6990 is the Antilles unlocking switch for Uber mode, which seems to be named solely to force the acronym awesome. <laughs> Flip it and the base clock rises from 830 to 880 megahertz to match that of a standard 6970. Core voltage is also increased and the power consumption goes from 375 watts to around 450. Yikes. Now in terms of performance, this doesn't really do much, at least not in my Fallout 4 and Crisis tests. And I wouldn't say that it's really worth it for the added consumption, though if you do have a capable power supply, which you should have if you're using one of these, then why not? I mean, we've already got a small power plant taking shape in my living room, so why not go nuclear? As you can see from this gameplay though, things are still running fairly well, and I will admit there was a little less stutter in Fallout 4 especially, which was suffering beforehand. For my GTA 5 test, I had to switch off MSI Afterburner because it was flickering. The gameplay itself wasn't just the MSI Afterburner overlay, so while I could see it, 
it wasn't present in this recording. You might be able to pick up the frame dips in this footage though, but despite this, the game ran with an average of 60 FPS at the very high settings. For extra performance, I'd recommend turning down the population variety option, as this can impact the card's VRAM usage quite a bit. While you can still make use of Crossfire then in some scenarios, the card is still let down by its ever declining support. Driver updates have left this behind, and some newer games act like you've got integrated graphics in your system, refusing to start or warning you that your hardware isn't good enough. Thankfully some of the troubles I experienced today can be alleviated by running the card in single GPU mode which essentially turns the 6990 into a standard 6970. It is still an okay card in that respect but that does mean you'd be better off buying a 6970 in the first place which seem to go for less than half the price of 6990s on the used market. Games like Fortnite though will run at 60fps albeit with low settings and closer to 30fps when things are turned up. We didn't need the performance mode here either as standard low settings did just fine. Kingdom Come Deliverance will give you what I like to call a similar to console experience or 30fps most of the time. This is at 1080p with the low preset though so it may look a little worse than it does on your console of choice, but the beauty of PC gaming is that things can be fine tuned to your liking. The game still looks good, even with everything reduced from the graphical menu including anti-aliasing. I'd certainly recommend 900 or maybe 720p, but it's fair to say that in most cases where games run, a 1080p 30fps experience isn't too much to ask for, like here in Rainbow Six Siege. Again at low it looks good and 30fps plus is doable, but ideally a higher frame rate would be perfect for competitive shooters like this. I always find testing these old high-end flagships fascinating because we get a great look at the lifespan of certain cards. Older high-end single GPU cards probably end up holding out much better over time because they are hassle-free these days, and considering dual GPU solutions were once considered the future of gaming, it seems weird that we've wound up in a world where SLI and Crossfire are obsolete now. I've said it before and I'll say it again, if you want an older AMD flagship in 2021, I'd recommend going for nothing less than a 7000 series card, for example, the 7970. That's still supported, driver-wise, for now, anyway, and therefore it will do better than this card in pretty much every instance. Still, this really isn't bad for a freebie. With all that said then, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a like on it down below, leave a dislike. If you didn't, let me know what you think of the 6990 in the comments below. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already, and hopefully I'll see all of you in the next one.